women with real issues come forth. And Elwise's voice is there. Um, I interviewed Elwise and I was, I was uh, in awe. Um, because I felt that this was a woman, after being in self-help for all of these years, uh, the self-help sister circles that we have, uh, that this woman had begun uh, uh, and done well in healing. And, and more importantly, I believe, for black women and the black community, breaking through that shroud of silence that we have about domestic violence. And so I, I'm, I'm, I was fascinated by your story, but I would like for you uh, to also talk about your story. But first, I, I would like your take on what violence, particularly intergenerational violence, what impact that has on a family and, and how uh, and what that healing that Dr. Sullivan was talking about, how you, what was that pivotal moment that you knew that you had to begin that path toward healing? Absolutely, Eleanor, thank you. Um, for me to really give justice to that question, I, I have to kind of start with the, the story. The story of having come from four generations of mothers and daughters that suffered and survived over 60 years of domestic violence and abuse. And in fact, I would go on to recount that story in the book, Color Me Butterfly, where I told the story of my grandmother and my grandfather, where my grandfather viciously abused her and her eight children, beating them oftentimes in a nude until they bled. And when my grandmother would try to intervene to save her children, he would turn the belt on her and be her until she bled in front of her own children. My mother was one of those little girls and she would go on to tell the story of how, how after my grandfather left the family, she would meet and marry my father, a man who had promised her that he would never ever treat her the way her father had treated her. No sooner than the ink was dried on those nuptials, my father turned into my grandfather, beating my mother more viciously than my grandfather had. My mother would tell the story how she once lay in a hospital in Philadelphia with stitches from the top of her chest down to her navel and told now to kiss her five babies, three girls and two boys goodbye, because my father had beaten her so badly that he burst both her lungs. She was 23 years old, told that she would not make it through the night. I thank God that my mother was a praying mother because my mother would eventually walk out of that hospital. But what my mother would not do was tell from which she came. You see, she did not tell now her three daughters and two sons the journey that she led. I was just 16 years old the first time my eye was blackened and my lip split. And the moment of reckoning, I say every abused woman has a day that I call the D-Day, the day of reckoning. My day of reckoning came when I was 17 years old. Now I was pregnant by this person who had viciously beaten me throughout this pregnancy. And I had come to discover that this child that I was carrying would be the only child that I would be able to carry. And because of that, as that baby grew inside of me, my will to survive grew in tandem. And I would go on to tell him that the day, eight months pregnant with my big belly and bruised pride, it stopped. It would not stop only because he would eventually go to prison. I would go on to raise that child and that moment came for me, Eleanor, that you mentioned, when did I understand? I understood that moment when I sat on that porch in Wilson Park Projects and I would look to my left and I would look to my right and a moment of clarity came for me when I seen girls my age, 17 years old or younger, we were all pregnant and we were all being abused. I would decide right then and there that my way out was education. I would spend the next 16 years raising my daughter as a single mother and going to school until I learned and earned three different degrees, including an MBA. 
I thought I would do all the things that I was supposed to do until 22 years later, I discovered that now my daughter was involved in an abusive relationship where this person not only tried to cure her once, but twice. The second time, he will strangle her while now her baby girl named Promise, six months old, lay on a bed beside her. It would be that moment and Promise's story that would lead me to realize the cycle in my family and to go on to found Saving Promise. Had it not been for Promise's screams, I would not be here today. My story is every one of your stories because domestic violence is one of the most serious family, social, and health issues of our time. In fact, the CDC just recently, in the last few months, came out of re with a report that said one in three women and one in four men experience either sexual violence or intimate partner violence. And nearly half of all women have experienced psychological aggression, and women under the age of 25, 69%, and men, 53%, before the age of 25, experienced that. But what was most deafening was to know that African-American women, women of color, lead that charge. We have the highest rate of domestic violence and abuse. So I am so pleased to be able to talk about this issue today because this is just one of many issues where black women lead when it comes to health. And, and we thank you for sharing your story with us because what it says to us, and in the book, uh, uh, in part two of the book, uh, we identify 10 of the leading health conditions uh, uh, for black women. And domestic violence and violence is one of those. Depression.